Today we're going to talk about bear spray and how to use it effectively. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about bear spray. We're going to talk about what this is, how to handle it, how to use it, and how effective it really is. Ho oh bear! Ho oh bear! So just what is bear spray? What is in here that uh, makes this work? Well, it's got two things. Number one, it's got a propellant, which, which is pressurized and will push this um, volume of air inside this canister out. And it also has an active ingredient. That active ingredient is oleoresin capsicum, or OC. Uh, OC is a naturally oily substance derived from hot peppers containing capsaicin and other capsaicinoids. Uh, that's the same kind of stuff that makes food hot and spicy. So true bear spray is very different from mace or pepper spray. Uh, you shouldn't rely on mace or pepper spray to protect yourself from bears. True bear spray has a larger canister and the propellant shoots farther, usually at least five meters or 16 feet. Counter Assault is the leading manufacturer for bear spray. That's the, the brand that I happen to have here. They were the first company to formulate a spray specifically for bears. And this year they released a spray that can reach 40 feet and over 12 meters. So uh, not only does it give you more reach, but that power is more useful in windy conditions. Is bear spray legal? Absolutely. Bear spray is legal across both the US and Canada. It can even be bought in the US states that prohibit pepper spray. Pepper spray or mace is also illegal in Canada, but you can purchase and carry bear spray for personal protection from bears, no problem. Bear spray is, however, considered a prohibited weapon here in Canada, uh, so you cannot use it on humans. Um, so you really don't want to be walking around a downtown environment with this. Uh, you'll have some explaining to do. So how does bear spray work? Well, it causes an immediate and temporary burning sensation on the skin and uh, causes burning and swelling of the eyes, sometimes causing temporary blindness. Um, if it's inhaled in the respiratory tract, uh, the respiratory tract can become inflamed and cause swelling and, and reduce the ability to breathe. The propellant in this is extremely important because it shoots out a certain distance, uh, allowing you to hit a bear right in the face and creating a bit of a cloud barrier between you and the bear. Bear spray absolutely needs to be airborne to work. It does not work if you spray it on objects. In fact, bears are very curious creatures with a very great sense of smell. And if you spray this on or around your tent or, or whatever, uh, you're likely to attract a bear to your site and not um, not scare it away. So let's talk for just a minute about handling and storage of bear spray. When you buy your bear spray, it's likely going to have one of these on it, a zip tie. That zip tie will usually be through the trigger hole and it secures the safety in place. Now that makes this safe uh, for transportation, but it is the last thing you want to have on your bear spray uh, when you're in the backcountry, you will not be able to pull that safety off. So definitely want to cut that off before you go into the backcountry. When you're storing your bear spray, or if you're going to transport in a vehicle, you should have one of these, a bear spray canister. This is a simple plastic uh, container with a small little hole in the lid to let pressure out if necessary. It's got a foam uh, core on the top. The inside is lined with foam. And I recommend putting your bear spray in upside down. That way, if it does go off, all that foam is going to absorb it. So you seal that up and uh, you're good to go. Much, very, very safe for storing and transporting. Second best, if you don't have one of these, is get yourself some zip ties and use those. But again, um, that's second best. And remember to remove those uh, before you go to the back country. So some things to know about bear spray on commercial flights. They are not allowed on a commercial flight. Uh, you can't even bring them in checked baggage. You can't even bring them in one of these in checked baggage. They're simply not allowed at all. So if you're going to be traveling before you go into the back country, you're going to have to buy or rent bear spray in the location that you're headed. You can bring bear spray on a bush plane or a helicopter, but you really should tell the pilot first. Um, and you should tell the pilot, not just when you show up and, and board the plane, but call ahead, let them know you've got bear spray that you'd like to bring with you. They will likely carry this on the outside of the plane somehow, either strap it to the outside of the plane or put it in some sort of external compartment. So how do you carry bear spray? Well, ideally it's in a holster and that holster is secured on your person, either on your belt or on a chest strap. 
So it's best if this is on your person and, and not on your pack or on a mountain bike or something, you want it on your body. So it can be a bit of a challenge to bring bear spray with a backpack because the, the, the hip belt on the backpack can interfere with a holster on your belt. So uh, you, you'll tend to want to put the holster on your backpack hip belt. Uh, so I'll undo any straps that are there and try and pass them through here and reattach them. Sometimes that's not possible. So I bring a carabiner always with my uh, bear spray. That way I can clip it to something on my pack. Um, it's less ideal if it dangles like this because you're gonna be trying to get it out of the holster, but um, it's better to have it on you than uh, on the pack or worse yet inside the pack. You want easy access to this. So a carabiner is sometimes the best solution. A carabiner is also really useful on canoe trips where you might be doing portages, switching packs quite often, going back for another load. Um, you want this with you and the carabiner makes that a little bit easier. This is very useless if you leave it at one end of a portage and go back to get some more gear. So I recommend carrying at least a 10 ounce or 290 gram canister. That size canister will give you eight or nine seconds of solid spray time and uh, that's what you're going to want to have. So if you're in bear country, I recommend that everybody in your party have one of these. And if you're alone, I recommend that you actually carry two. Um, one on your belt and one on your pack or in your pack as a backup in case you run out. So it's a really good idea to practice with your bear spray first. Uh, that way uh, you're familiar with it and you're going to be more comfortable using it in an actual bear attack situation. Bear spray isn't cheap, but you can buy inert canisters which are cheaper and safer to use than the real spray. And uh, expired canisters are still very potent, but you can practice with those as well as long as you're careful. So here we are outside. Let's look around for a bear to spray. Okay, okay, not a very scary bear, but I think it's gonna serve our purposes. As soon as you spot a bear, you wanna prepare yourself and remove the bear spray from its holster. And then with two hands, you wanna pull back with your thumb and remove that safety. Ho bear! As discussed in part one of this series, you do not wanna run, you wanna hold your ground, you wanna prepare your bear spray, and you wanna communicate with that bear. Once the bear gets within four meters or 13 feet of you, you want to give it a short two to three second burst of bear spray. Right in the face. Ho bear! Ho bear! Hopefully one spray is all you need. Ho bear! But it might not be. If the bear is persistent, keep talking to it and keep delivering short two to three second bursts of spray. Ho bear! and try and hit the bear directly in the face. One canister will give you three to four good sprays, so move away when you can. <coughs> okay guys, it is really important to move away after you discharge bear spray. Um, it does leave a bit of a cloud in that whole area and it's kind of blowing around with a light breeze. So you definitely want to move out of the way. Um, I discharged two canisters actually in the course of filming and uh, I'm affected, a little bit caught me. Uh, as it was blowing around. My eyes are watering, um, my throat hurts a little bit, I'm coughing, uh, and uh, I just caught a little whiff of it. So you can imagine what it's like for a bear to get it right in the face. A big question people have is, is bear spray effective? Absolutely yes. Bear spray has been proven to be the most effective deterrent against bears, period. A 2008 paper in the Journal of Wildlife Management by doctors Tom Smith and Stephen Herrero and others assessed the efficacy of bear spray in a large number of bear attacks in Alaska from 1985 to 2006. These included black bears, brown bears, and polar bears. 98% of the time when bear spray was used to stop a bear attack, the humans were unharmed. In the remaining cases, only minor injuries were reported. Now, no deterrent is 100% effective, and there have been bear attacks where spray was used and serious injury did occur. But the trend is that bear spray is very effective at stopping bear attacks. So how about firearms? Aren't they effective? In a similar 2012 paper in the Journal of Wildlife Management, doctors Tom Smith and Stephen Herrero again did another study. Um, they looked at the efficacy of firearms in preventing bear attacks. Out of 269 gun defenses from a bear attack, only 77% of firearm users were able to successfully defend themselves from an attack. In fact, 17 people were killed in these encounters. The study could not find a significant difference between handgun success rates and long gun success rates, and in all these incidents, 164 bears were killed. 
This study highlighted some significant contributing factors of why firearms were not more successful. Many who were attacked reported that they were concerned about shooting another person involved in the incident. Some reported that they were reluctant to shoot because they didn't want to have to skin and carry out the hide and skull, which is required in many U.S. states. And others said they were reluctant to shoot because they didn't want to shoot a protected species and perhaps pay a fine. Bear attacks can be very chaotic and you need to make decisions in a split second, so any hesitation at all, uh, thinking about these other issues, can lead to a negative outcome. I also took a look at all the brown bear attacks that led to human fatalities since 2010. Firearms were present in at least three of those 15 incidents. So based on the facts and data available, I would recommend that anyone who is going into the backcountry should be carrying bear spray. Even hunters or other people carrying firearms should also have bear spray. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Better you than me.